up um, today I'm gonna be showing y'all how to mix and master some techno with stock plugin FL stuff only first get a nice drum groove going it's just a kick a hat another hat A rolling hat and then an open hat and this perk which is kind of like a it's like a it's like, kind of like a hat that I turned into a clap then we got a sub and we got a second sub right here And I had like a mid bass to kind of bring those uh, lower frequencies a little bit higher. Again, this is not mixed in any way, so it sounds terrible. Some chords. A pad here. And then finally an arc. So yeah, as y'all can tell, that sounds pretty terrible. Because everything's just kind of clashing into itself and it's just a mess, but we're gonna fix that right now. So what you wanna do first is of course link everything to the mixer. I like to separate my stuff, so like the drums I usually put on, on the left side. And then like the bass and melodic elements I'll put more this way. That way I just have space to like work with. Alright, since this is stock plugins only we got to create a sidechain for all these sounds to do that we go into let's create a new section a new pattern here call it sidechain insert a track here that way it just stays on the top i like creating a separate separate sidechain instead of using the kick to sidechain the sounds i like um cloning the kick and creating a, like a ghost kick that way, when the kick isn't playing, the side chain is still happening. Rename it. Color it. Put it right here. And you want to link it to the mixer. And then the, the important part here is that you got to unlink it from the, from the master channel. That way the sound doesn't come through, but the signal is still going to be, it's still going to be there. All right. So I like docking this to the left. So no, it's just separated. Okay, so once you have it sidechained to all the elements, you get a limiter. You go here to compress, and then you right click here and you just choose it. And then you adjust the levels here for for the sidekick to to kick in. So let me give you all the example.
so here this isn't really hitting where the kick is so there's not any compression happening so technically you don't need a sidechain for this one and then what you do just so that you don't have to do it over and over and over again you can just go here where it says save preset as and drag it to all the other ones And the important part is that you want to have the the sidechain limiter at the very bottom. That way when you add all your mixing elements, the sidechain is happening after everything. Because if you have it up here, the sidechain is going to be happening first and then whatever effects you use. And that's not really what you want. So, Okay, so just go through every sound. And just kind of adjust where you want the sidechain to kick in. Again, this one's not really hitting um, with the kick, so it's not causing any, any clashing. This one is a little bit, you see? But that's what you want, you just want a little bit. You don't want it to like do too much compression. forget don't forget to put it down here this one's doing a little bit more compression so it sounds like if you have the full um signal going through So next step is uh, leveling. So just turn off all the melodic elements and just do the drums first. What you can do is turn everything down. Just have the kick playing. So everything's kind of going to revolve around the, the kick. And by the way, to get this right here, this meter, you want to go into the plugins and choose Wave Candy. And then go into the meter right here. And then you can adjust it. And then this is Span. This is a free plugin that you can download. Just uh, Google it and it'll come out. So it's really useful to see the frequencies. And then I have a soft clipper just so nothing like goes over zero and like messes up your ears or anything. But this isn't doing anything really. It's not it's not creating any kind of a effect on what I'm doing here. Kind of use your ears, you know, whatever, whatever sounds good to you, like that works. You know, it's very minor adjustments, but it, it makes a difference. And so, step two would be to to EQ everything. This doesn't really need any EQing, but we're just gonna leave it there in case. Just really, all you want to do is remove the low end. 
same thing, you can just save the preset. like this has some some low end information right there and you don't want this part all right that's good next step is we're gonna eq the 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 bass so right here i have two subs and then i have like the mid bass just to bring out some like higher harmonics so we gotta balance these out because this one still has like low end in it, like sub in it, and you wanna remove that, so. You're gonna go here and click on detached. That way it stays on top, even when you choose um, other stuff. You wanna do it for for the other sub two and for the mid bass. So as you can see here where the, the sub information is coming through, so you wanna cut that out. Um, depending where you cut it is gonna depend on where the sub ends so here you can see it's kind of just like around right here you don't need like the higher higher frequencies so let's cut those off about a hundred oops wrong one yeah about a hundred and so in this one you want to go to about a hundred And this one's a little bit too like farty. I don't know, it's like too clicky. So just, just kind of lower it. I mean, that's what I'm doing. Uh, your sounds might sound different, so it's totally up to you. So without it, with it. So now we gotta level these with the drums. Something that I like to do in order to balance out the kick and the bass is I'll turn on the, the, the kick and the bass section only. Then I go into the master track and I add an EQ. You can, you can detach these now that you're done with them. But yeah, you go into the master and you cut off all the high end and so you can only hear the sub and the kick frequencies. And so you turn everything, you turn it all down. And then you, you you put up the volume just to where it sounds good, you know, not to where it's overwhelming or it's too low, just where it sounds good.
once you once you balance that out, you just take that EQ off of the master. All right. So now we move on to the melodic elements. So now you gotta kind of balance these out. So just turn one by one on and just kind of adjust it to your liking. And again, just lower everything down and then bring it up slightly. Just EQ these elements real quick. for both of these so this one has a much more higher end right here and this one has more of a lower one so what you can do is just dip this here Dip this over here. got the whole track kind of balanced a little bit let me play it all for y'all So now I'm just going to go through each sound and kind of add effects, you know, like delays and reverb, chorus, whatever it needs, you know. Right now it sounds, it sounds alright, but it's still missing some things. So here's kind of where you just get creative and, and add your own flavor to each sound, you know. Just kind of experiment, you know, don't be afraid to to mess it up or something like it doesn't matter, you know, you just just have fun with it and uh, do your thing.
<clears throat> so what I like to do is instead of putting the delay and the reverb on the actual sound, I create what are called sends. So I'll do, let's uh, rename this delay. Oh man, that was terrible. Delay. And then let's call this reverb. And then what you do is you just, for example, this uh, pad. If I want to add delay to this, like it already has delay, but if I want to add a little more delay, what you do is you, you click on it and then you go down here, you right click and you put a route to this track. Make sure you put this one and not this bottom one because what this bottom one does is it'll unlink it from the master and it'll only link it here. And you don't want that. You want this dry signal to be going into the master and then you also want this signal to be going into the delay. So you click on this one, route to this track. Right now it doesn't have any effects so it's just doubling the sound. So it just makes it louder really. So what I do first is I'll add an EQ. And I'll usually cut off the very low end and the, some of the high end. Just depending what, what part of the, the sound you want to affect, you know, you that's why you use the EQ. And then, let's see, let's add this delay too. And you want the dry signal believe you turn it all the way down let me see yeah that way you turn the, the dry signal down because the dry signal is already going into the master track so you just want the wet signal so you turn all the dry down because then again it's just doubling the sound and making it louder instead of um instead of letting the effect come through So without it, and with it, see so it just it just gives it more space, you know, it makes it sound more ambient. So, and then you can adjust how much of it you want going into it right here at the bottom. do the ARP to add some reverb to this one again go into the reverb add a EQ adjust it add a reverb turn down the dry signal turn up the wet signal with it you know you just gotta mess with every mess with every dive and mess with everything and that's the only way you like find things you know you find things that work and things that don't work
again, you adjust it down here. Maybe add some stereo separation. And you always want to check on uh, in mono how it's what it's sounding like just so that you don't have any phase and cancellation you do that by turning on the master track you just turn this knob down here all the way to the right if you don't have if you don't see this knob down here it's probably because you got to click this this right here and it'll pop up on the bottom you just turn it all the way to the right You gotta remember to take it off once you like export the track because then your track's just gonna come out in mono and it's not gonna sound all that great. All right, again, this is just it's just a basic tutorial on how to do this. Of course, like when you're actually making a track, it it requires a lot more. But just so to to give you guys an idea of of how to do things after you've like created something like a loop so after everything's mixed somewhat like eq'd and and you have your effects and whatever i like to create buses so i'll create a drum bus a bass bus a melodic element bus and then like an effects bus so the way that you do that is just rename one of these Trombus. Color that shit. Rename this one Bass Bus. Rename this one Melodic Bus. And then rename this one FX. Bus, bus it. All right, and then I will dock these. Usually, I dock them on this side, but I'll do it on the other side just to kind of have them separately. So you go down here, dock to the right, dock to the right, dock to the right. Oh shit! Dock to the right and. Talk to the right. And then you get your drums. Turn everything off. Just turn on your drums. And make sure that none of them are routed anywhere else. Like for example, um, these are routed to, to these. So if I were to right click here and put route to this track only it's going to unroute it from here so you got to make sure that they don't have it routed to anything else i'll explain that a little bit better right now you just highlight everything i'm pressing Control shift go into the drum bus right click down here and then here you do want to click on this one route to this track only it'll unlink it from the master and it'll just put them all into this one. So you can control it this way. And then you do the same thing for the for the bass. Right click here, rotate to this track only. And the same thing for the melodic elements, but you'll probably have to do these one by one. So this one isn't routed to any other one except for the master. So you can go into the melodic route to this track only. On this one, you just do it manually because if you do, like I said, if you do it like this, it's going to disconnect it from here and you don't want that. So just unlink it from here and then just click it here. And it will do it for you. Same thing for this one. And then for the effects, you can 
You can just select them both go to this track only. And there you have it. You have everything separated. That way you can just, you can hear every separate section. I think this is probably, probably the most important part of like just mixing techno in general and any, any genre really. Um, grouping everything in sections and, and mixing them all together like that. So start with the drums. Um, what I like to do is I'll add a compressor. We're going to go into Maximus. When you turn this down, uh, Maximus is a lot to explain, honestly. I, I won't go like super in depth on like what everything does, but I'll, I'll try my best to like at least explain a little bit. So what this is, is that it's a multiband compressor, so you can compress the low end, the mids, and the highs, and the entire sound all together. This right here is just mono and stereo separation. This right here is like kind of like the ratio, just like 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, blah, blah, blah. This is like the threshold, but it's also an exciter, so you can add to it and compress. And when it's right here, it's not doing anything, you know, like I play it, it's not doing any compression. Once you bring this threshold down, it starts doing compression. And there's a line that goes across here. So if you, if you go to this side, it's, it's adding to the sound, it's not compressing it. See, so it's going up right here. But if it's on this side, it'll compress it. So what you want to do is kind of just, well, what I like to do is I'll, I'll squash the signal completely and then I move these parameters right here. That way I can hear what the compressor is doing and what you want to happen with the drums is that you want to you wanna have the kick come through. So you need um, a long attack time. That way the kick comes through and then everything after the kick kind of compresses a little bit. You don't want to over compress it either. But just to bring out that like, that bump, you know. The, mm, 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 mm. So yeah, let me show you what that's like. You can do multiband, you can go into the lows, the mids and the highs if you want to, but I'm just going to do this over all the entire drums. very subtle what it does is it glues the entire drum section together with compression and then it, it brings out the kick a little bit more look I'll, I'll turn off the effects and then i'll turn it back on and what it's doing too if you notice here on the meter is it lowered the volume because it's compressing it so what you want to do is you want to bring that gain back up with this knob right here. So you turn it off and see where it was at before. It's about five decibels. And when it's turned on, it's doing about like two dBs of compression. Or you want to turn it up to where it's, it's back to where it was originally. That way you can do an accurate comparison. So now when you turn it off, on. And those are both at the same uh, level that they were. So you can kind of tell like the higher end kind of brought, got brought up and the kick is a little bit more dominant even though the, the volume is the same.
So yeah, now we let's move on to the bass. Want to do the same thing at Maximus. And what you, you can do here is go into the subs and put them in mono, both of them. Um, the sub frequencies are going to be in mono, so it's okay if, if the mid bass is a little bit more open. You want to do the same thing here. You want to look at the level and bring it back up. It's about 10. Before. After. See, it's, it's more tight. do the same for the melodic elements again you can go into each band and and adjust and compress to your liking I'm just doing it over the entire sound for now about like 13 and then the last but not least the effects can add some you can add other effects too like I said it's it's totally up to your creative um, potential and stuff but you can add just different things more effects more reverb whatever you want you know maybe even do some stereo separation here without it just kind of makes it a little more interesting without any effects with it now let's listen to the entire loop with everything put on and then I'll take them all off so you can hear what it sounded like before all of that It just sounds a little more dry, more dull, more dull, dull, dull. Just sounds shitty, you know. And then with it. It 
sounds just more more tight, more together, you know. All right, so that's again very basic um, mixing. So now what you want to do is you want to start the mastering process. So step one for the mastering process usually involves cutting off the low end and the very high end. So about 30 hertz here and 18 over here. just takes out the very muddy like bottom end step two is you want a compressor to kind of glue the entire track together but just subtly you don't want to over compress it either What you can do is you turn it all the way down so you compress the fuck out of it and then you mess with the parameters see what sounds good to you and then just apply a little bit to it so if you hear too much like clickiness you can bring down the attack if you want more of that bottom end to come out more of the hi-hats to come out you pick it up you can hear them like coming out or you compress them Sounds good right there. Just some vintage compression here. Put it all the way back up. And then bring it down slightly. See right there is good. Alright, so yeah, what that does, it just glues everything together. And then what you want to do now is um, go into Maximus. And now you're going to go into each frequency band and, it, and compress, compress it accordingly. So you click here on solo, that way you only hear the low end. And you go over here to bands. And you adjust where the low end is. You kind of don't want to hear the, the melodic elements, you know, you just want to hear the bass. I think about here is pretty good. Up here you'll see on the top left corner you'll see where the frequency is at. It's about 120 and 25. And right here in this knob, you can turn it all the way to the right, and it just makes the low end from like one from here down mono. And then go back into the monitor. You see these peaks, these are pretty fucking peaky, you know, they're pretty peaky. So you want to compress them a little bit. Not too much, but but you definitely want to compress some some of it.
and then again you do the same thing you look at the meter and you see where it's at um when it's turned on and when it's turned off and then you just adjust the, the post gain accordingly and you raise it back up to where it was so it was about uh, about seven seven db and with the compressor on it went all the way down here so gotta bring it back up that's good see these peaks you don't want these crazy peaks right here these peaks right here are not good but you also don't want to compress the crap out of it so just kind of go right here you'll see this line pop up just kind of go to where the peak is see you just compress that these parameters you can adjust but i think this is pretty good it's about 11 Really just doing a lot of compression actually. Let's see. That's ah, fine. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe let a little bit of uh, a little bit of attack through. Raise it back up. You can add some stereo separation right here, just a little bit. I'll go into the mids. Now, this one you see it's all kind of crazy. It's usually the highs that need the most compression. So, go about here. See how it's like kind of the level is like about right here. You just bring it down. The more points you add, the more subtle the compression will come through. And here, if you click on this one, you can see what it's like afterwards. And this is what it was like before. It's a big difference, you know. Turn off the compressor. It's about 10. Turn it on. Let's raise it back up to 10. You can add some stereo separation to this too. Don't go like all the way either. Just, just a little bit. And now we listen to the entire track. See right here, there's no, there's no like crazy peaks. Like you don't want crazy peaks going all the way up here. And then like, that's, that's too much dynamic range, you know? So you just kind of want everything leveled. That way when you raise the volume, it kind of all just nothing will will spike across too much and there won't be distortion or clipping or anything like that and here you can still add some some compression here i usually don't i just leave the master alone i just put this up and it just makes sure that like it doesn't have any compression Now I'll show you what, what it sounded like before Maximus, before we did multiband compression and after. So this was it before. And this is it afterwards. Before and after. 
just brings everything up, you know. It brings everything to like a a more evil level, evil even, more even level. And uh, yeah, you can use Maximus to to put the volume up after if after this. This is pretty much the basic. The basic things you want to do with uh, mastering is just do everything together and do some multiband compression. You can maybe add some some stereo width, but I already kind of did that within this, you know, right here with these knobs. And again, just like over here, you can just add other plugins if you want to add like tape saturation or things like that. You can you can do that. So in order to put up the volume you go into the master right here and you just put up the well first you got to turn this on right here this is some very subtle saturation you, you got to turn it to the right you got to make sure it's to the right and not to the left you see this red means that it's going to saturate the entire track so you want to go to the right and the right it'll, it'll bring it up just slightly right here so you barely want to turn it on. And so it kind of creates a, a ceiling. And so anything that goes above that ceiling will get cut off. But it'll, it'll be like lightly saturated. It's different than just completely clipping it off. So I'll show you all what, what I mean. Oh, and it's going to get pretty loud. So if you have headphones on, you might want to like turn it down. So anything that goes above is going to become saturated. And so what I like to do is I'll put it all the way up, or not all the way up, but just to where it sounds distorted. And then I'll bring it back down to where it doesn't sound distorted anymore, and then that's where I'll leave it. So this ceiling, I'll bring it down to like negative 0.3 dB. Just to have like a little bit of room. So what I do with the, the, the analyzer here is uh, you kind of want everything about from here to about here in like level. That's like a pretty good loudness. If it goes like all the way up here, you need to do some EQing. And usually the bass and the, the high end are kind of even, even though the hats will be like a little bit lower. So you can see that the melodic element is kind of spiking through. You kind of want this dip so that like the melodic elements come through. The bass might be just a little bit too high. I'm going to go back in and, uh, and work on it.
show you all what it was like before the mastering and after the mastering. So this is it before. And this is it after. This is it mastered, but without the drum bus stuff. And now with it. Without it. Just, it's tighter, you know, it's more together. No, it's not so messy. But yeah, that's about it. I think that's about it. It's a very simple, very simple way of explaining it. I hope it helped you guys somehow. Um, I'll be making more tutorials. Let me know what y'all want to see. Um, I have other videos on my channel where I just make it from scratch so y'all could see the entire process. I have videos where I go live, so it's like real time, slowed down, like me making an entire track. And I'll put my, my uh, SoundCloud link in the description. I'm working on putting more music up. And hopefully Spotify soon too. And yeah, stay groovy. Keep making techno because techno is fucking dope. Alright, peace.